entrez. Bonjour, Toulouse. No, uh, Derek. I just wish to warn you that if I ever see another yeah, cat flap, yeah. I will positively puke. Yeah. All right, keep your shirts on, Lofty. I've only brought Edward here to look at some of your work. So, you wish to see the paintings of Tillis La Trac, do you? Well, do you well, certainly. Only, you won't mind if I carry on working, will you? No, 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 no. Please continue, Monsieur La Trac. I'm sure that the Derek can show me everything I want. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Very keen on the fillies. Like the horses and all. Ah, oh, yes. Excellent. <laughs> I have never before seen such a lifelike picture of the bottom half of an horse. Hey? Oh no, that, that's me, that one next to it. Real that one, isn't it? Yes, but I mean. Oh. Hey, you like this one. Look at that, eh? It's from his early period. His early period? Yes. That was before they bought me this box to stand on. Ah! <laughs> What's the box? It's what you stand on, Spoghead. Ladies and gentlemen, the piece you're about to hear was originally composed by Verdi and then, at a later date, rearranged by Mrs. Gladys Wendt of Croydon. It's entitled Concerto in E Minor for Tiddles, My Pussycat, and is a particularly moving work, so if the musicians suddenly disappear from sight, please don't be alarmed. This piece also gives the chance for the musicians to dispel the popular myth that rock and roll music is bland, mindless twaddle with no redeeming features whatsoever. It's... <laughs> One, two, three... Anytime you want to, you can talk to your lawyer. You can talk to a priest. You can talk to your mother. You can talk to the police. You can tell an old lady she's one of thousand quills. You can talk to an old lady and ask her what she did. On the telephone. 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 When you're talking to the telephone. It's raunchy. It's the hottest book published this year. It's got words in it you've never heard before. For the very first time in paperback, this explosive volume, which goes into explicit detail, where other books usually have the end, is available in its completely unexplicated form from all leading booksellers. So remember, it's racy, it's raunchy, it's the Oxford English Dictionary. Get your copy today before it's banned tomorrow. Apart from being an illness, does the word art cover anything else? Yes, it seems to mean much more to them than we ever picked up by monitoring their television transmissions. It means all sorts of things. For instance, a group of them will dress up in funny clothes and paint their faces, then stand in front of other humanoids and pretend to be people they're not. They have politicians here as well, then? No, that's different here. They have to kiss babies. Babies? 
But surely babies are too young to vote. Though I can see why politicians would appeal to them. They are about the same mental age. But tell me, Zilch, what's art got to do with this dressing up business? They call it the dramatic arts. It means giving a performance that will make other earthlings, well, laugh or cry. One minute, please, Mr. Morton. Thank you, my boy. Ah, well, here goes. Break a leg, old man. Hello! <laughs> I understand you'd like to see me about alone. Yes. <laughs> Come and have a laugh at Bonzo's, the giggling bank. Come and have a laugh, have a laugh at Bonzo's. Come and have a laugh, it's the giggling bank. <laughs> Good evening and welcome once again to Film Slick. This week I'll be showing you clips. Oh, put it down for goodness sake. I've not started yet. Oh, hello. <clears throat> Good evening and welcome once again. Oh, darlings, please. Thank you. Good evening and welcome once again to Film Slick. This week, I'll be showing you clips from several new films. I'll be setting our usual film slick quiz, and we'll be looking at last week's poser. We also have a special on-location report from Italy. Now, you might think that Italy would be a really good place to go and interview a director or an actor or almost anybody, really, because, I mean, you would think, wouldn't you, that in the whole of Italy, somebody somewhere would be making a film. Well, I'd never been there before, so why not? But first... Let's have a look at a film that's been cleaning up in America. Hey! Hey! What do they call you, beautiful? Naomi Never Nolan. Yeah, that's a nice name. Nice, but, you know, unusual. No, 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 man. Over there. Naomi Never Nolan. Nay, Bono, Nay. But I'm sorry, I didn't know you had a speech defect. <clears throat> Wow, hell, I just see my mother, baby, standing in the shadows. I got it split. Nice meeting you. Bye. Nah, dude. Whoa, hey. What are they call you, gorgeous? Just be too gorgeous for the moment, honey. You're doing fine. Recently, Australian films have been gaining quite a reputation for themselves, and I, for one, think it's justified. Still, given time, one of them's bound to be watchable. Here's a clip from one out on general release at the moment. Some dreadful colonial directors had the brainwave of doing a remake of Alfred Hitchcock's classic, The Birds. Rumour, rumour, base to flying TV critic. Rumour, rumour, base to flying TV critic. Come in, please. Mary, point it loud. What's happening? I don't know, Sheila. I left me script by me surfboard. It's quiet now. Do you think they've gone away? Nah, I don't think so. They've probably just nodded off. I wonder if the birds have reached Sydney yet. With the sake of mankind, Sheila, let's hope not. 
blight. He's the one who persuaded me to take up sheep pen. It, it's Sydney then. Um, they keep flinging themselves at the door like that. We've had it. That's right, Barry. you got to act quickly. I'm oh, flaming hell. Sure, I'm speaking as quick as I can already. If I go any faster, nobody at Alan Stancing would have signed. I mean, the drama school in Melbourne, you always talking to enunciate things very clearly, like, who the flaming hell Sydney? Well, I'm afraid we seem to have run out of time, and doesn't time fly when you're having fun? Well, it's goodbye from me, Richard Dank. That's all from Film Slick, and so until next time, good night. It's over. You can switch off now, I've finished. Oh, well, suit yourselves then, I'll go. I think I understand now. Understand what, Sana? The Earthling's expression. Which one? That show. It was a pain in the arts. You get a lot of words. You try to make them work. What do you get? You take a letter M, then you add a string.